All right, this, I'm no sweat. Uh, it's de what is it, November 20th, 2021. And Jeremy and I are shooting a brand new video showing the breeders for 2022 that I'll have at the No Sweat Loss. These are all birds bred down from Heitzman Seons. You're looking at some of the blue bars that uh, I'll probably be breeding from right here. Um, Jeremy's gonna be videoing me while I go through the different loss and talking about the breeders. Uh, trying to give you uh, some idea of what's going on with me and, and the birds. These are birds that uh, uh, have relatives that all flew in South Africa or Victoria Falls or in the uh, Hoosier Classic and uh, have done very well. Uh, some of the birds uh, also have relatives that have flown 500 miles as young birds, 600 miles as young birds, and 700 miles as young birds. Um, this is a loft I normally call the Africa loft because uh, it's, the, it's the loft that I always kept the, the birds that I was reserving for Africa. Um, I kept them in this loft, and then I would ship them from this loft over to the next loft. They had to be pretty special birds to be going in here. Um, all these birds are blue bars in here. I have right now, I think, seven red cocks, 12 or 13 silver cocks, and I don't know how many blue cocks right now. I haven't counted them really. I haven't divided them up just yet, but it'll be about offhand 35 blue cocks. And so that's that's how many cock birds that I'll have to select from. Maybe 40 blue cocks. It's somewhere in that range. So you can see I'm working with uh, 35 and 15 roughly, about, uh, which makes 50, and then another seven. I'm working with maybe 57 cock birds, and I'll have probably 60 or 65 hens. So we're talking 135, 140 pigeons roughly uh, that I'll be working with this coming year. Uh, it's a little more than I want to keep over uh, than uh, than I normally do from one year to the next. Uh, so, but this is the, the the nicest group of young birds and old birds combined that I've ever had in my life. I had a fantastic breeding year last year. Uh, I didn't raise as many birds last year as I did the year before, but the quality of the pigeons was up, and uh, they all have good back cover, tight vents, good balance. Uh, smart pigeons. Um, so I'm just now starting to feed this little group here this morning. It's right now uh, noon. I waited a little while for Jeremy. I wanted to um, wanted to make sure he came and video today. I'm kind of excited about it. I want everybody because I, I know people. Are, this is a third or fourth time that Jeremy shot videos, and I wanted to try to get, try to show the breeders. That's going to be the big thing today. And uh, there's a mix of birds here, young birds and old birds. There's a few hens in here. Oh, most of the young birds in here this year's birds are all with the red bands, uh, red AU bands. And I went through four different kinds of red bands this year, AU bands. I think I had uh, the KY bands, which are normally issued to me, and then AA bands, and A, uh, the uh, I forget, I forget all of them. ARPU bands, and some other kind of uh, band. But they're not all KY bands is what I'm getting at. Uh, so when you go to banding several hundred birds a year, and I only even get 200 bands, I have to start get, trying to get bands from other people. And they did, again this year, run out of bands, the uh, AU. So I, I, I got some like the very last band that they had. Um, right now I'm feeding them a, a kind of a cheap, cheaper mix of feed. I just had this uh, made for me over at Versailles, uh, Kentucky. It's the same uh, feed that the Lexington Kentucky Racing Pigeon Club uses. And it, it's, it's pretty cheap. It costs uh, $14.50 right now for a 40 pound bag, which is you know a lot cheaper than most pigeon feed. But the birds are doing very well on it. I just got to take them through the last two months to feed them a lot of sunflower. And, uh, and I was feeding them feed that was running me more than double than this. Uh, so this is a good, well-behaved, real smart group of birds right here. Very tame, typical of my Seons. Uh, when I'm, Jeremy's in the loft with me right now, and they know there's another person in the loft with me. I never allow anybody to come out into the lofts 
Uh, so it's only always usually me uh, that are around the birds and the birds know that. They know my face and they know my mannerisms. And uh, so they're a little nervous when I bring a second person out, but I have exceptionally tame birds, which is what I, it's what I breed for. It's like, you, know, uh, you can see they're down here eating at my feet right now. Uh, I've got a couple of key blue blue bar old birds in here, but most of them are uh, most of them are young bird hens that I bred this year, and uh, they're showing how well behaved they normally are. That's the black eyed hen right mm -hmm. here, a very possibly the best breeding hen I have. Mm -hmm. I'll catch her for you just in a second. Mm -hmm. I call her that because that's what she looked like. She's got black eyes. Mm -hmm. But she's not bad numbers 33. And she bred a pigeon uh, that beat all of Mike Candace's birds in the last uh, uh, South Africa race. Uh, I think uh, to get it finished 90th in the South Africa. I'm trying to get where you can see her eye. She actually has a dark violet eye, but just to glance at it, you would think it's it's a uh, uh, a black eye. And you, you people talk about the black eye seons. Well, this particular black eye is not black at all. It's a dark purple eye, and has a has a green inner circle in the eye. This particular hen is the only hen that I have left out of all the different birds that I've flown that were young birds at 700 miles. A 700 mile young bird is extremely rare. And uh, I don't know one else in the United States that's been taking their young birds out 700 miles and letting them go. And in the past 15 years, I've done it four times and all four times birds came back. Uh, the fastest that I had any of the young birds come back from 700 miles was four days. And uh, this particular hen, I let 40, 41 or 43 birds loose from 700 miles, which is down around where Disneyland's at, down around uh, Orlando, to fly back here to Richmond, Kentucky. She was the only bird that came back out of the 41, and, uh, and it took her about 10 days to come back. And uh, I wasn't overly impressed with that, but the fact that she was the only bird that came back and, uh, and the old thing that Charles Heisman, my mentor, had told me, probably if you can get a young bird back at 500 miles, even if it takes it two days, uh, you're probably gonna have a good breeder there. It's a good pigeon. And so the difference between a 500 mile young bird and a 700 mile young bird is huge. A lot of birds, not a lot, but some birds can come back from 500 miles uh, on the second and third day but very, very few birds can come back from 700 miles. That extra 200 miles is just enormous, very difficult for birds to, to come back from. Uh, she's not exactly the most, what I think is a perfectly sea on type or that wedge face and all that, but boy, she breeds well. And I've kept her, she's a 700 mile young bird. She'll be, I'll keep her with her same mate that she's, that she's been with for the last couple of years. And that's, uh, where's he at? 96 right there this this blue cock right mm -hmm. here he has the classic what i call the old heisman eye the whole this is what charles heisman bred for was a pigeon like that he liked it this is 96 and uh he's the last of his of, his, of all those siblings i raised that right here. that year was hold on his band number is 2014 KY96. And in 2014, I was flying some of my young birds along with the Cincinnati Combine. And Gary Stone was the uh, uh, person who was hauling the birds. And uh, I would, uh, Gary would meet me here and I would add on some birds onto the trailer and ride with him down and we started letting the birds go. Uh, my birds along with the Combine. And uh, it was a shorter distance for my birds to fly. In that group of birds that I was letting go, I had eight blue bars that were all out of the same family. All out of, They were all brothers and sisters out of the same pair. But this was one of them, number 96. Those eight birds uh, flew through two different smashes that we had, really bad races that, uh, that the Cincinnati Combine experienced. They flew through 
really dense uh, fog in the Smoky Mountains and a great many birds were lost on, on each of those two smashes. They were like 200 miles and 300 miles. Anyways, all eight of my birds in that one family, they all eight came back each time. I never lost one. And what was more remarkable than, uh, I think it may be some kind of record, what was particularly remarkable is that I took all eight of those young birds along with the other group of birds and let them loose at 500 miles. And all eight young birds came back from that same one pair that made that bred them that year. I had eight 500 mile young birds out of the same pair. Don't know of anybody that's ever had any, that happen. And this is the only one I've got left. And he's a fantastic pigeon, medium size, perfect in every way, tame, very smart, has a red orange eye. And, um, and I've mated him back to the 700 mile hen, so that's a fantastic mating as far as I can see. You know, mating a 500 mile young bird cock. I had all of his brothers and sisters flew back from 500 miles. Back onto a 700 mile young bird hen. You don't have to be real intelligent to think, well, they're going to have some pretty good babies. And their babies have been fantastic flyers wherever they've gone. Uh, I'm going to walk out here and I'm going to show you what his eye looked like in the sun because this is what Charles Heitzman looked for in the pen. What I call the classic Charles Heisman eye. Charlie and I handled thousands of pigeons over the years. And many, many times he said, Robbie, this is what to look for on a good racer, particularly a long distance racer. That's what, that's what he wanted right there. Um, this bird is invaluable. I mean, he's tremendously valuable to me. I don't know what I'd, I'd do without him right now. Like I said, he's the last, uh, he's the last of that group I made, made him half this year to uh, to 90 uh, to 33 the black eyed hen, and then I may and I may I may switch him up with another hen sometime in the middle of the, uh, uh, maybe around June or, or in the middle of the breeding season try to raise another one or two rounds with a different hen because I've had him with the same hen. They've been breeding fantastic pigeons, and uh, that's the way I wanted to keep it. You know, you, you know what you're going to get, but I'd like to see if I couldn't put him to something else. Uh, he's the bird, I, he, very consistent. He never set out a, a night ever on any of the tosses. And on that 500 mile race, uh, a 500 mile toss that I had him and his, all of his brothers and sisters on, they came back early on the second day. They weren't day birds. But getting 500 mile young birds is very hard here in Kentucky. You have to have a good tailwind to get that. Put him back up. All right, here's another one of my breeders that just came out of that room. This is four, five, six, seven, seven. Easy dog, easy. Um, he's a 2017 bird, and he's bred some really good pigeons in the past year. He's classic Sion, beautiful pigeon. He's got a, more of a, what I call a maroon eye. Uh, has that beautiful face. He's really a tame pigeon and a good father. And I have him made it to one of my very best hens. Soft, soft feather. Uh, covers in the back when he's when he's uh, you know standing on his own stuff. Uh, this is exactly what you want with a racing pigeon. This this size, he's medium size, soft feather, tight vented, keel comes real close back to where the vents are. There's no space there hardly at all, and um, just everything about him perfect. Uh, and has a wonderful eye to breed from or to also fly. This kind of eye flies well all over, all over the United States and all over the world. Uh, you see pigeons like this that are of, of different strains as well. But this is a pure old line Sion that goes back on to Leroy, which was the most coveted uh, Sion that was brought into the United States. It was brought in by Landon View Loss. Heisman didn't have Leroy but he managed to get two children from Leroy. And uh, his foundation pair is, uh, was, was one, one of the red checks that he got out of, that started his Sion colony, was out of Leroy. So he, uh, and then later on he got another bird uh, from Leroy that he added on to his Sion family. And that Leroy blood has just been worth its weight in gold for going, you know, close to a hundred years now. I don't know of anybody else in the world right now that has is Leroy blood and uh, I don't know it's fun he's a fun bird to handle because of he handled he, because of because of the 
per perfection in him, you know, because of his soft feather and, and everything else that I just mentioned. Um, old pigeon man would, you know, they all, you handle thousands of birds, and you know when you've got a good one in your hand a lot of times, you know a special one, and he's one of them. But he's another, another bird I'll be breeding from, one of my breeders, and I love this bird. Uh, I'll probably raise six or eight young birds out of him this coming year. I'm going to I'm gonna uh, make the birds a little later than usual. I'm giving them all a big rest this, this winter. Here we go with another another one of my breeders. This is the sister to a bird that was called my favorite, which was a fantastic breeder. And uh, I've got her mated to the, the cock, 77, that I just showed you. Four, five, six, seven, seven. That's his mate. And she has not a maroon eye. She has more of a chestnut eye which is another eye, the chestnut with the green inner circle. And this is more of the eye that uh, Charles Heisman also loved to breed from. And she, again, is a real classic Sion. She's a little off in weight right now, uh, which is untypical of her. She's always stayed healthy, but uh, she's down just a little bit right now. One of my fa favorite hens that I own. You'll see I've got a, an old, the old type band on her leg right now. Uh, the old aluminum band, that's, I, if I put that kind of band, I've got probably 50 of those bands left in my life. If you see me put one of the old type aluminum bands on the young bird, it's got to be extra special. Now this bird's band number is 74 on me. It's a 267, two, 2617- uh, four. 74 is what I call it. That's what I, that's what I mark her down in the breed books. I, I, I don't go through the long numbers a lot of times. I'll, I'll have it that way. That's 74. Full sister to uh, a bird that I call my favorite. Also a fantastic breeding pigeon. Just showing some of the, some of the birds again in the same loft. See, it's mostly the 2021 hens. I've got to get these birds separated. Hope to do that after I shoot this video this week. Okay, you gonna stop it. Good. You got them all? All right, we're in another loft. I, I love this particular loft. It's, it's the, or flying, one of the flying lofts right now. Uh, all the birds in this particular loft, right at this moment, uh, are all hens. I've separated them from their mate a couple of weeks ago. So this is the gossip party. These are all the girls get together and talk about the, whatever hens talk about. And they're all my red hens and my silver hens. And uh, the reds have a lot of Leroy in them, but the silvers have both and the Rosalette blood and also uh, the old Grizz family, Fion blood. Uh, the Madrona Loss in California had the old Grizz blood. And, uh, and here, this is some of it, but they didn't come, these birds didn't come that route. I'm just talking about them in general. These birds are all high school Fion that I've bred down. Uh, I think this is a fantastic group of hens myself. I've never had this many gorgeous, Silvers and red, brick red. They're all brick reds, or they're all silver. I don't really have a cream puff powder silver hen in the bunch. These are all what I call kind of average colored silvers. They're not any dull silvers, and there's not any light colored silvers. They're sort of run up middle of the road. And there's no mealies in this particular group. I do have one strawberry mealy hen. She's over in the loft, and she flew uh, 500 miles as a young bird. I call her Queen Strawberry, and I've got her mated. Junior. I'll show you both of them later on. Um, I think uh, I've only got seven red cocks, and I'm going to make those red cocks to these red hens. In fact, I'm just saying, but I've got more red hens there. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. I, I think it's twelve. I've got this late hatch. And that's the only real, real late hatch that one. That's going to be a gorgeous brick red, too. Um, I've I've tried to keep the brick reds. Uh, it's a color that I particularly love. And these birds, a lot of them go back on to old 51, and old 51 went back on to Leroy. That's why I talk about 
uh, Lorenz, a lot of them having the same bloodlines, you know, if you look on pedigrees, and I'm talking about going back many generations, they actually go back on the, the same blood. I a lot of my blue bars at Leroy blood. Uh, but I've, over the last 20 years, I've really started to mold this family of birds more and more and more through selective breeding. I'm getting birds. The first thing you, you look at on these pigeons, you, you look at their faces, and you'll see that the faces are starting to blend closer together. I'm getting more of a kind of a robin's type, a no sweat type. And uh, uh, you'll see it in the silvers and you'll see it in the reds. They're, they're distinct types. And I uh, don't know what else to do. This is a, they love this law. Uh, you know, it's way taller than I can reach up and catch them. I don't want to catch them. There's no reason for me to be catching these birds. And uh, they love having that feeling of having to be in a way being able to get away from it. Although these like again when I'm by myself, these are extremely tame pigeons. Here we go with some there. These are some of my older hens. You'll see this double banded blue bar hen over here. It's probably my single most favorite silver hen that I have. She's classic Sion. Her father, don't show her. Uh, her father was a bird that flew five and six hundred miles multiple times. I've never really been able to get a pigeon out of her too much that I like. Uh, her babies have flown very well, 700 mile. One of her babies was a 700 mile young bird. But uh, this year she bred me a silver cock that's out of this world. And I've got him down in another loft. And he's a, the, my favorite silver cock I raised this year. Big, strong, fantastic, classic sea on pigeon. But here you go with the typical, typical sea on face, as much as you can possibly get one, that wedge face. Yeah. I had seven birds I raised out of one pair. And uh, she was one of them out of this powder silver cock and another silver hen that was down out of out of hardcore and long wings to 600 miles and um, two of my best 600 miles. So she had eat up in long distance blood. I think I've got three of these birds left. AU 2015 AA 1792. And of the ones that, that are left out of that uh, those seven birds, she's my favorite. She's a perfect pigeon again. Uh, I call her fatty. You'll see it sometimes on the on different references I make to a lot of my pigeons. Her, her nickname has always been fatty. She's always the first one to want to run down and, and get something to, about to eat when I when I put the food down. She here she especially if she's got babies. I mean she's she's right there in the feed trough. Let's walk over here and I'll talk about a couple of birds here. Uh, you'll see that brick red hens this year's bird with the red hen with the red band and then the other birds are older birds uh, that bird right there easy baby easy 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 is a daughter the, the, uh, there's a cooper hawk out here this morning and uh banged into the avery's and that's one of the reasons the birds are a little bit nervous uh, it's not fun having somebody uh, hanging loose around wanting to eat you all so anyway Come back around this way if you can try to pan, if you can try to shoot all the way around through there so that you can, and hold it up as much as you want. I want everybody to see how nice these these the reds and silver hens are. These are my breeders. I could start catching, you know, one by one and talking about them individually, but uh, we will be here for a very long time and I just want to, I think this gives you a, a really good idea. And there's nobody in the in the in the world that has a family of Sions like this. Nobody. Uh, there's some other people that have Sions, but these are birds that are racers. These are birds that are 500, 600 mile pigeons. Uh, and, it's, and it's a good type family. There's been no introductions to this group of birds. These are pure old Sions. You can't get better Sions. If you, you know, this, this is it. These are birds that are flying against the best in the world today, not living off of yesterday's pedigrees. And, uh, you know, you can see for yourself uh, what they look like. Um, I'm very proud of them. I had a lot of compliments from different people from all over the world say they absolutely love these reds. Uh, I don't know of anybody that has, you know, reds of that 
of that, you know, manga thing. I'm enjoying you, you know, coming in and, and seeing just seeing the breeders. Uh, I want everybody to see what is our workout of him. You, you can use your own imagination to see, you know, that's what he's got is the parents of the birds. But, you know, the apple doesn't fall far from the tree. You know, that, that's what I'm going to be breeding as well. And uh, a great many of these birds, I'll be, you know, who I'm going to mate them to. And I'll, I'll match, I'll try to get a bird with them that balances out so that their babies will be perfect pigeons. I try to raise, when I put two birds together, I try to put two birds together that are going to raise babies that are better than either parent. And I think that's the secret, that's been the secret to my success is I've continuously been able to breed better pigeons with the same group of pigeons that I've had every year. I keep trying to get better and better and better. And I've always had that gift of being able to do that. Uh, but after I, my first Charles Heitzman pigeon, I got in 1959. I'm going on 71 years old. And uh, this is 2000 and be almost 22 here in another month or in a few days. And so from 1959 to 2022 is how many years? And that's how many years I've had those, I've had these Sions. Uh, they've always had a big place in my heart. I've had, I, I, like I said, I, what, what, what can you say about them? You might want to cut off here just for a second. Are you ready? Jeremy's up on the ladder now in the loft so we can get a little better view of these birds. I just threw some feet down so I know they're wanting to eat. But I want him to kind of pan around and show each bird as much as he can. Come on, birds. They're nervous because of the hawk and they're nervous because I got here. But uh, Jerry, you can turn around and shoot down on, on the reds in this Avery right here, if you will, right behind you. Just kind of easy to turn around and shoot so they can see what the those reds look like. Yeah. Uh, come on out here, baby. Easy, easy, easy. easy. One of my typical reds. Uh, that's last year's red, the blue bands. Uh, all my old bird uh, reds will have blue bands on. They're all last year's birds. I don't have any birds older in the reds than, uh, than last year. And that's because I had a mink that got in the loft uh, where I had a lot of my red hens and cocks bolt last year and killed 32 of my pigeons which about left me breathless when I saw it. But fortunately, I had a lot of the, uh, some reds over in another vault. And uh, that's what I bred from this year. And so you'll see all my old birds, all my reds will either have a red band on them, which is this year's birds, or a blue band from last year. I don't have any reds older than a year old. Uh, but I've built the reds back up again. The reds make up about 15% of the total amount of people somewhere in that range. Uh, so and I'm still trying to get them built back up because uh, I want to get them back. I'm hoping this coming year to get back up to my normal routine where I fly all the young birds back to 500 miles. And I want to get some of my reds back, you know, to my 500 miles again. Because that's, uh, that's, what I, that's what I'm after on. It's just long distance. I'm stressed long distance all my life. And that's what people who know me know that's what I breed for. And not just long distance, but extreme long distance. You know, not just, uh, you know, four or five hundred miles, but I've taken six and seven hundred miles. And again, like I said, six and seven hundred miles young birds is altogether different than a five hundred mile young bird. Uh, you, oh, you only need to take your pigeons out that distance to find out what I'm talking about. Um, so, this is what's left of Charles Heitzman's memory. Uh, there may be other people in the United States that say they have Charles Heisman birds, but uh, they certainly don't have the quality of birds that's here. And they certainly don't, they're not flying these young birds 500 miles, and they're not racing their birds against the best pigeons in the world. Uh, there's no other Heisman Sion person that's doing that. Let me hit it just for a second. Hang on. I got a good shot there. Right there. Really proud of these hens. I hope you can see just how nice they are. Come down to us for a 
second. They're gonna look more like silhouettes out here this way, this light hitting them. Miss Avery. John was out here mowing the, uh, this fall and hit that Avery that's right there and, and knocked it down a little bit. We've never we've never raised it back up. Try to pan over there and then we'll leave here. We'll be done with this run. Just over there and try to get that silver no pretty good. That's some really nice birds. There's my double banded blue hen again down here in the corner. She's waiting to get something to eat. That's fatty. As soon as we scoot out here, she's gonna drop down. I know she will. They're all they're all waiting to get something to eat. I tell you what, we're going to take a A breeding loft primarily. It's a small loft, uh, but it's got a big aviary. Aviary is as big as the loft it is, and then we've got another aviary on the other side of it, so it gets a lot of air in here. The birds love this loft. It kind of reminds me of a lot of the 40 lofts that Charles Heitzman had. He had all those army lofts, and a lot of the army lofts on the inside were about this size, and he built big aviaries on each side of them and really expanded them and gave them a whole different look, and that's what I've tried to do this. You'll see right now, it's November 20th or 21st, whatever it was I said. And I've got a hen here sitting on two babies. This hen is a 500 mile day bird, as a young bird. And I've got her mated, that's red eye. You can see there's two little babies right there. They just hatched in the last day. Those babies are worth their weight in gold. I've got red eyes mated, this 500 mile young bird. I mated her back on to this old cock right here, Tyrannia you see him. I call him the Waddle. And Waddle flew 500 miles six times, and 600 miles three times. And he's thir going on 13 years old this year. He's the oldest pigeon I have, and I, have, I don't have another pigeon that has his flying record. So I put him with Red Eye. The green band. With the green band, that's his old racing band that he had. So he's a He's a fa fantastic pigeon. Uh, he's got the light uh, pearl eye, and she has the blood red eye. And that's how she got her name, was I called her red eye, because in the light, she has a brilliant, just cherry eye. Uh, more of a red than any pigeon I have. She's got a little bit of yellow in it, but not much. It's basically a solid red eye. And, uh, you know, him going on 13 years old, they fertile every egg. And, uh, and I've got a couple of their babies in here that I'll be that I've stocked back to raise it as, as to keep as breeders so they're, I'm letting them go on ahead and raise right now even though it's this time of the year uh, you know I'm going by my schedule not by everybody else's schedule very fact that I can raise babies out of that you know 13 year old cock and this and this hen that, that's what I want I want babies out of them I don't care what time of the year it is uh, same thing going on at another pair up here in this corner both of their parents are uh, 600 mile bird, the 500 mile birds of Queen Strawberry and Hardcore Junior. And all four of their grandparents flew uh, 600 miles as young birds. And that was Hardcore Junior and, uh, I mean, Hardcore and uh, uh, Long Wings, the Blue Check Hen and Chattanooga, Blue Pencil Hen and Resolve, a, a red hen. That's the grandparents of those two birds over there. There's four 600 miles. So again, right now, I, I don't care if I've got, I just want the blood, make sure that I, that I can't, you can't have better blood than that. There, here he is. This is a product of, of four 600 mile young birds. So you can imagine what I think of him as far as racing value goes. 
and he looked a little bit more like Chattanooga. Uh, he's a classic Chattanooga type. She had a little bit of that white in her like that and more of this dull blue and had a little bit of white in her. See, he's, he's come back to look more like his grandmother is who he looks like. And this bird up here looks like his granddaddy. It looks like hardcore, which was one of the best 600 miles I ever had. He, he looks just like his granddaddy at that when he was a baby in the nest. He's a, he's a little bit of a mealy, and that's what hardcore was. Again, all four grandparents are 600 mile young birds. Young birds. I would stress that word, young birds because you don't see too many other 600 mile young birds. And to have pigeons that have all four grandparents that are 600 mile young birds is not heard of too much. I don't know if anybody has them. That's, uh, that's one of the late hatches from last year, but he turned out to be a great breeder for me. Again, he's double banded. And usually when you see double banded birds from me, but she got taken in the head as a baby and that little feather comes out wrong every time I pull it out. So I just leave it alone. I call her tuft. T-U-F-T, and because of that feather coming out like that. She raised me babies this year, and their babies have all been fantastic. They don't have the tuft. Tuft is to, uh, at the summertime, which was uh, one of my best racers that I had in South Africa, uh, that blood, this one right here in the Avery. This is a really, really great group of pigeons right here. Uh, all the red banded ones are this year, There's, uh, which is at least uh, over half of the birds in here are red banded. And I'll be using mo a lot of these as breeders. Uh, that little bitty hen that just came out here, still got a little fuzz on her head. She's out of waddle and red eye. She's out of the 13 year old cock and the, uh, and the, and the, and the red hen that's got the babies in there. And you can see how she closes in the back and she's small size. So she's gonna be just like red eye. She's gonna be just like the mother. And, and she's worth her weight in gold. Uh, I mean, as a racer, those little small hens are generally the birds that come back best for me on, on, on uh, longer distances. Uh, you'll see a, one of my favorite hens uh, right here, Queen Strawberry. There was a guy got her from me for a while, and uh, I let him I let him have her, gave him to him, and then he brought her back to me and said she wouldn't lay any eggs for him, wouldn't do anything. And within a couple of weeks after I had her, she made it to Hardcore Junior, and I've raised uh, probably 10 young birds out of them. She's been fantastic breeding for me, so I have no trouble. She just wanted to come back home, That's, and that happens with some uh, different pigeons. That's usually a good pigeon. And she's a beautiful strawberry, and Heisman loved those strawberries, and um, she had a brother that was a strawberry that was a good flyer when my first birds back on her really hard 400 miler. I took him down one time and almost to the four uh, line and let him in. And he came back, he came back two hours in front of everybody and, and, and had a broken wing, had a hurt wing. And he was that car. And that's who I've got her made it to because he's at a two 600 milers and she's at a two 600 milers. And, um, you know, logic dictates that, you know, that those four. And that's worked for me in the past. I had Another combination from that same way, and I called them the red pair. It was a red cock down out of that same two pigeons and a red hen out of the same. And those reds, uh, every time they bred a blue bar or a blue chick, which were always hens, uh, they were they were always did well on the on when I took them to Florida. They always came back. Um, Queen Strawberry's got a chestnut eye. She's got. Another eye, uh, Heisman had an eye that he liked to race, which I talked about earlier with that bird 96, the blue bar cock. But he also had another eye that he talked about, and I did it in one of my articles that I did on Charles Heisman for the uh, Racing Pigeon Bulletin. He had an eye that he, uh, that he really desired to breed pigeons out of. He liked to make that cross that, that red eye into a particular other eye. And she has that eye. That when I come over here to catch them, Jeremy, they're gonna come back at you, <laughs> these birds will. That's, that's normally what they do when I walk in this side of the Avery when I'm by myself. They all, I always let them walk around me, but with you being there, they're probably going to fly up towards you. Uh, let me have that just for a minute so I can... There you go. Keep it like that. I'm just going to get down here with them just for a second. Just, I'm wanting, Like I said, I want to show the breeders. I'm trying to get in here close with them. I want to do a better job at showing the birds than a lot of guys do. I want to take time with them so you see the quality of the birds. That little uh, Reef Reward, that screened-in thing I got right there, 
That's a little mouse trap I keep out in the Avery. Mice can go in it, but the pigeons doesn't affect them in any way. They love this, they love this loft. Uh, this is the loft that I had the, the mink that got in and, and killed the birds uh, February of last year. You see the double banded blue bar cock right back there that I've got up against the uh, Avery. He's a line bread back on to called my favorite. And he looked exactly like my favorite did at that stage. And I'm gonna call him my favorite junior or something along that line. I still haven't given him a name, but he's pretty much exactly what I look for in a in a cock bird. He's uh he's not even a year old yet. And I raised some babies out of him this year that were nice. Uh, these birds, a lot of these birds are down or out of birds that uh, they're full brothers and sisters to birds that flew very well in South Africa is what almost all these birds are. Uh, so this is, this is essentially what the kind of birds that I had in South Africa. Hold on. I put those milk crates over the waters so that when I uh, so that they don't they can't get any uh, won't mess up the waters and get them dirty. Uh, right now I'm not using those particular waters, but that's what those milk crates are over the waters for. Let's see, I was gonna catch I was gonna catch Queen Strawberry. There she is, she's up there with her mate, hardcore junior. Up there on the upper left, the top roof. Again, she was a bird that wouldn't mate for a friend. But uh and I had that happen, the same thing happened to me when I was with uh, Charles Hyson once. I got a hen from him, and she wouldn't lay, and he said, bring her back. And the next spring, I came up there, and he, he was smiling and showing me that there she was on eggs for him. So I learned a lesson there, and, and she's been another one to do the exact same thing. Some birds just are not going to raise babies or lay eggs for somebody else, but they will they, because they're homesick. And those are usually extremely good pigeons. Uh, that particular pair has been raising blue bars, which always have to be hens. Anytime you raise a blue bar out of a, a silver and a red check, that's two red genes mixed together. And they raise a black gene pigeon, which could be a, a black check or a blue bar or a blue check. The color sex length opposite laws dictate that they have to always be a blue bar. And you've got two reds laid together and they raise a, a blue or a black check or blue bar, they're always dead in. And that's one of my breeding pairs for 2022. 20, I will not break that pair up. They're not the most beautiful pair, but for racing, you can't get any better than that for long distance. Um, he's kind of a medium small bird and she's kind of a medium small bird. And uh, a lot of people agree that that's, that's kind of a size that you want for long distance. Um, Trying to, the light's not hitting on me perfectly. Like I to I'm going to catch this hen because I talked about her eye and I want Jeremy to shoot that eye. Here's this eye. I hope that Jeremy can get that color. It's sort of a chestnut, orange, brown mix. I don't know if you can see it that well. Right there, possibly. But that's an eye that Heisman was crazy about for breeding. If he, he wanted to always like time to cross that up with that red orange eye. That's the eye that he was crazy about. That's almost a, sort of a green on the inside. And see so again, she's a strawberry. See, she's a mealy. It's a silver with sort of a little bit of check pattern mixed in with it. And it's a real classic Sion color. And when you've got mealies that's got brown in them like that, that's always a hen. If they have black in them, they'll be cocks. That's a color six. Also, here's another young bird I raised this year that I absolutely love. <laughs> He's built like a, a monster. Super, super pigeon 
Uh, but I want you to see his eye. He goes to the other extreme. He's a light violet eye, which a lot of people, particularly it seems like in Africa, uh, this eye flies very well. I noticed that the birds that were that raced real well in uh, the Victoria Falls this year were very much this type of pigeon, uh, this size pigeon and that kind of eye. I guess we've got a lot of breeders. I'm just talking about the breeders. I just want to show everybody where I'm at in late November of 2022. And of course, I won't be breeding out of every single one of these pigeons, but uh, 85% of the birds that you're seeing in this video will be breeders of mine uh, come 2022. I'll probably have at least 60 pair of breeders. So, should give you uh, a very good idea of the quality of the pigeons. I'm, I'm, uh, I'm ecstatic about the possibilities of, of, of what's going to come out of this group of birds. And this year, I hope to raise at least two or 300 young birds to train them here at, uh, at these lofts to try to see if I can't get them to come back to 500 to 200 miles again this year like I've done in the past. That's water. Water's okay right now. That moon are about empty. These are all blues. All these birds are tender birds that flew very well for me in South Africa. Yeah, just keep it up there and show them the roost. You can step in if you want to. Show some of these out here in the Avery. That's where the muffins will fly up there. Shut that door down. Look at the quality of those blue boys. People, I, I've been in a lot of laws. Shoot down on them so you show the color more. Yeah, uh, up, bring it up. Shoot them down, down on them. Yeah. Like it. I don't have a favorite out there. Tuft is one of the best breeders, believe it or not. She's so well bred herself. She's out of 500 mile birds. Uh, I mean, look how many red banded birds there are in the group. Uh, one of the cocks that I love the most. There he is. He flashed, late hatch last year. That's what I was telling you about earlier. It's a, my favorite junior. Right here he is. That, that face. That kind of body, got a little bit of length to it, but he's not a heavy bird at all. He's a, you know, that's that, that's what you want for long distance when you're full of cock birds. You know, one thing I want you to notice, I want you to kind of pan around. Look at look at how similar the faces are on these birds. There's some variation, yes. Some variation in the eyes, yes. But still, anyone who knows pigeons can see that this is a very much a distinct family of birds. Very recognizable. Tight feather, but soft feather. Tight vented, closed back. You'll see every one of the birds have closed backs. No exception. Let me go here and we'll show an old Waddle again. Waddle has gotten on the nest now. He's relieved red eye while she jumped down to get some food. And he already had some food. He's a, you know, when these old cocks get 12 and 13 years old, they're so used to me and people, you know. It, he's just real gentle right now. He's a little nervous. You know, I've got a lot of birds that'll fight me and everything else, but he and he will usually. But right now, he's a little bit nervous. The hawk and a new person in the law. But uh, he's, he'll be 13 this year, and I, I believe he'll fertile every egg again this year. I'm hoping I can get him up 15, 16 years old and raising babies. That blood's fantastic. Uh, he is the father 
of the bird that bred the 41st place in South Africa. He's the daddy of that bird. So, you know, that, that was good. And that was 41st uh, two years before the, the South Africa race ended. Uh, and there's, there's Hardcore Junior. Looks just like his daddy, Hardcore. All racer. They're not fantastically beautiful pigeons, but hey, they, they're, they're great long distance breeds. Well, here I am on the fourth loft and uh, I'm getting ready to go in. I wasn't in the loft yesterday, uh, but I'm back here today. I skipped the day. So the birds will be a little bit hungry. And uh, as you can see, I've got four or five gallon pans of water. I'm still be able to get water out of a big container that we keep down there that we fill up with the water hose. But uh, oh, in about another couple of weeks when everything starts freezing up, I'll have to get all my water from the creek down. I'll have to bust the ice out. I fill these up. A whole different ball game then. I'm people to death to be able to water them like this right now. I usually give this log five, five gallons of water at least every other day. So it's 25 gallons of water. They go through about 12, 15 gallons of water a day, uh, this group of birds. And I keep any words. Right now they're not using that much because I've got I think 70 birds. It's a two room loft built specifically, particularly just to be a racing pigeon loft. It wasn't designed to be anything but that. Uh, I like to keep the rooms big, a lot of light coming in, and as much Avery space air. I think birds should have, uh, if you've got a four room loft, I think three rooms of it ought to have Avery's. And I think you ought to have at least 30% uh, of the roof should be light. And if you can, uh, the higher you get the loft off the ground, six feet, eight feet, ten feet, the better the birds are going to love it. So those are, and that's what you want. You want happy birds. Happy birds are healthy birds, and healthy, happy birds are the birds that are going to fly the best. It's the quality pigeons, too. That's what we got going on. Um, come on with, as we walk through here. Blue bars in here. Again, all that Leroy family. I still haven't separated a lot of these birds. Carrying water out like I always do. Come on out here, Jeremy. I've got, I've got about, uh, I haven't counted them. Something like 80 birds in this loft right now. Uh, come on out here and you can see what they look like in late November. 90% uh, of these birds are going to be breeders for me. Again, look at the quality of them. Uh, you can see again the family that I've been talking about. There's a type here medium-sized birds, soft feather, but tight feather, and uh, no open backs, no uh, and The big thing, these birds all come down out of 600 mile pigeons. Uh, that, that's what I've bred for. This is all long distance blood, pure seons. And again, I don't know of anybody that's got this many good seons, uh, you know, long distance birds, a family of them like this. Uh, so, I'm real proud of them, and uh, I hope that I can live to be 100 years old. I don't know where I'll go in the next 30 years with them, but I, I'm not about to get rid of my birds in any way at all. I, I, this is my vacation when I come out here to be with these pigeons. Um, if you can, Jeremy, here they come. Come on around here. Let me have that thing for just a second. You're all not coming out just yet. You're movie stars. I love you. You're movie stars. I just want you to, I'm trying to show, there's cocks and hens in here, and again you'll see that cock over there that's strutting and going on right now, that's a last year, that's this year's bird with the red band. Uh, you'll see a lot of red banded birds, but uh, I've got more of my old birds that I'll breed from. That bird out there, that real beautiful black eyed hen, she's out of 33, that hen I talked about. She flew 500 miles, she's looking back at me right now. And uh, I call her at 74, and 74 is her band number. And I've had her mated the last couple of years with a really beautiful blue cock bird. Uh, it's called Elvis. And I think Elvis is in there on his nest right now. Yeah, I'm letting some of these birds settle eggs right now. But I'm going to break all that up here in the next week. Uh, a lot of people be putting their birds together about this time of the year to get early hatches, but I'm not going to do that this year. And that is a good strategy to use uh, to put birds together. You can go back showing me again. I just wanted to get some of those. Up close. 
that is a good that is a great strategy to use. If I was going to try to breed birds, the earliest possible birds that I could, let me catch one of these birds. Something that I really love. Uh, I see one back over there. That's my favorite brother. I showed you my favorite sister. But I see his brother's over here. Again, you'll see he's got that aluminum band on his leg right here. Come here, my truck. We're going to fly back towards you. I'll pick 74. See the deal. Easy, easy. She's fat as a butterball right now. That's the way I want them going into winter. I want them with a little weight on them. Gorgeous hen. See, again, she's got her mother's black eyes. But she's got a little prettier face than her mother has. More of that classic Sion wedge face. And that face was... Uh, long story about that face. It was more selected by uh, Paul Sion's son, Robert. And he went back around through the French underground at the end of World War II to recollect the pigeons that they'd given all their birds to the French underground. He went back and he got, I forget what it was, 75 birds or 75 pair of birds. And he went around to different spots and got them. And he really looked for birds that had more his type. He was looking more for beautiful Sions, more than what his father had flown. His father had, those original Sions, they were very rangy in size. Uh, there were some that looked like whooping grain and there were some that were spirals. And uh, there was no no thought about any color discipline or any uniform uniformity to those particular birds. A lot of them were really big pigeons. Uh, I've got a lot of photographs of them. I handled a lot of uh, old original birds. I was privy to do that. Some of the birds that came from Robert Sion uh, when I was growing up. And uh, Robert put this kind of stamp on the Sions more. And there's a couple of guys in the United States right now that have that look on their Sions. Again, she's a good breeder, uh, beautiful bird, just typical, but uh, I'll hold it up for a second. One thing that I do get here in this big Avery, I get I get Cooper hawks that come down and land it on top and sit here and saliva tape, wanting their turkey dinners. and. They fly against the wall and hit them a lot of times. And this mishmash of roost that I've got out here, which no other pigeon guy has. I've even had a couple of people that's made fun of me because of it. The birds don't make fun of me. They love it. Uh, but And that's what's important. Uh, they have, uh, I've, had the, I've had Cooper Hawks land and sit out here on the edges of these things and, you know, uh, and even knock some of, the, some of the roost down sometimes. I'll put her up, but just a typical one of my sin. Uh, she's a very tame pigeon normally, a good mother, raises nice, nice baby. Um, kind of, kind of, there's another pigeon down there that I love, the little lighter colored eye. That's, I showed you one of his children a while ago. I had one that, when I was showing you in the other loft. I had a, a, a dark eyed pigeon that I bred, you know, this year, and I also had a lot, a lot of, and I kept bragging on it, that light violet eye. And here's the daddy of it. Ah. <laughs> Come here, hot shot. This is one of my favorite pigeons, and one of the best pigeons I ever raised out of hardcore and long wings. I didn't get a lot of blue bars out of that pair. And I didn't get a lot of really big, strong pigeons out of that pair, but he's that. And this is a, another bird that flew 500 miles. Got his daddy's eyes, and he got his mama's color, and he got the very best of both, which is what you want from any pigeon. Again, fantastic pigeon. Oh my gosh. He's got such tight vents, and keel comes back to him different. Everything flush, the keel, the, 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 the meat on the keel, you know, the breastbone. It, they, they, it flushes down and meets each other. There's no, you don't feel the kill that much. You know, it's, it's no indentations of, of any kind there. He's such a classic, classic racing pigeon, long distance bird. This is what you want to breed out of. Hold on, big boy, let me get you out of there. Well, he's, he's determined. We had a big red tailed hawk just flew over us and circled around here two or three times. I'm not worried about red tails. I've never seen a red tailed hawk catch a pigeon in my life. Uh, and that used to be the only hawk I saw when I was growing up with pigeons back in the 1950s. Uh, 
I would see a red tail circle over my loft and the birds would all cock their heads up and look at them and sometimes fly, but I never saw a red tail catch a pigeon. And not saying they haven't, but I remember they're way too slow for most birds. Uh, but a cooper hawk's a whole different ball game. He's sneaky. And uh, that's, his, that's his game, catching pigeons, among other birds. But he loves pigeons. Um, that's one of my favorite old hens. She's a classic sea on. That's what my hens look like when they get to be about four or five years old. They'll start getting the eye sear and the waddle development like that. They'll get to be more that type. And I tell people uh, a lot of times my seons will look like that as a young bird. See how she looks there? And then when you, as you go through a, a slow time-lapse photography process, if you could take a picture of one every six months, and after about six years, that bird will look like that bird. That's the change that they make going as they reach adulthood. The ice ears will develop a little more and, uh, and the wattle will develop a little bit more. But I do try to keep a little cleaner wattle and ice ear on my sions than, than people did in the past. You know, I have the one old cock over there going on 13 years old that has the heavier wattle. And I have a few other sions, but man, when I used to go to Charles Hotzman's house, he had, uh, you know, 50% of his birds had that huge big wattle on them. So I've cleaned that up a little bit, you know, with this particular family that I have right now. And a lot of people, you know, since I can go back, you know, 10 generations on a lot of these birds where I bred every single pigeon in them, they've become more no sweat seons than they are uh, Heitzman seons, even though, you know, I started with Heitzman seons. But they're much cleaner looking, much more uniform. Heitzman, if you could have walked into Heitzman's loft, you would have never seen, you would have never seen this you would have seen a much more variation. Heisman was uh, a fantastic pigeon person, the best. I've never met to this day anybody that loved birds or was, had, was a gentleman like him and passionate about pigeons like he was. But what he did with Seons was different than what I've done. I've actually kind of molded the fam molded them more into a family, whereas Heisman just concentrated strictly on on flying performances and bloodlines, and he didn't uh, he didn't care too much about what they looked like. He did. He loved a powder silver and a blue bar and everything. He loved those birds, but at the same time, he didn't. He didn't. He didn't try to create, build them into a real tight knit family. He didn't. He just didn't do that. Uh, and, and so there was a lot of variation in his in his own seons. If you go through his seon book, you'll see like morning glory and different birds that were in the. You'll see a little bitty blue check in or black check in and or, or like morning glory, but and, and then you'll see. Uh, like old 51, a big, strong, you know, dark red check cock. Uh, that duller blue over there, I'm hoping is going to be a big hen, but probably not. She's out of Lurch and Little Chattanooga. She's a late hatch, and that's fantastic blood. All that bird, that Lurch is the biggest pigeon I've raised in the last 20 years. Uh, Looked like a turkey, and I named him Lurch. But every brother and sister he had flew very well two years back to back uh, in South Africa. And that, that blood is really, really good. When you go on back with it, you find out the birds flew all, really well all over the United States, uh, particularly out in the uh, out in the western part of the United States. So that blood that blood is fantastic for me. I'm not about to let that ever you know get rid of it in any way out of my loft. There's a classically balanced pigeon, this little hen here, just going about balance. There's a little bit smaller bird. You see, she's got my no sweat band on. I have some bird that's got the blue classic no sweat band. Some of them have a blue no sweat address band. And they have a... Anyways, I've, I've, got to, I've got to water the birds. I'll turn it off for a second. All right, I've herded all the pigeons that was in this loft down into this one Avery. So there's gonna be about 80 birds, all blue bars, all my family birds. There's gonna be a whole lot more birds than what you just saw, but I want you, this is what I'm gonna be breeding from. I, it's a hell of a collection of, this is one of my breeders, typical Iowa, uh, 2021 KY 21128. She will definitely be a bird that I'll be breeding from. Big, nice, fan, uh, strong hen. I like a good hen like that to breed from. My birds are a little bit heavy right now. I've been overfeeding them. Come on out, we'll stand right here, Jeremy, and this will show all the birds that's in this loft right now. 
let me count right here. I've got a few still left in there. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, 30, 31, 32, 34. There's about 40 birds here. Maybe total. There's less birds in the loft than I, than I, uh, than I thought, which is good. I don't want a lot of birds this time. Look how fabulous this pigeon is. I have to look him up right now for a second. I'm trying to remember who he is. But that's a classic, classic. Uh, uh, I think he's out of, uh, pretty sure he's out of 1606 and, and, and 155, which was two pigeons that I called uh, my favorite. It's the father of him, and, uh, and the other hens is gold. Uh, 155 was gold. But that's definitely who he is. I now mean, look at his face. Um, I've read two that look like him and I kept him. He's been the best one. Uh, when I let these birds loose over here in this other loft when I'm flying them in the, in the spring and summer, the hawks have been coming down and getting me one, two, and three birds a day and even going in the loft. It really discouraged me about having an open loft and, and this year I really didn't train the birds because the hawks were just eating us up. You know, I kept about 40 birds out, you know, within, a, uh, within two weeks, I'm down to 20 birds, 18 birds, you know, and then they're like, that's just flying around the loft. And I mean, I'm watching the hawks take them right here. And they got really disgusting. Uh, let me have it just for a second. Again, I'm just really today, the whole purpose of this video is to show you the quality of these breeders that I'm working with, these Sions. And again, I have people that talk about these birds and they'll say Sions. It's pronounced, the word is Sions. C, like uh, you see me, I see you. It's Sions. Sions, not Sions. Sions. You know, I have a lot of people that you know, will call me and want to talk about the Sions. And I tell them, I'm trying to be nice. It's Sions, not Sions. Lock them off back there, do so. I, I, want, I want everybody to see how nice these birds are. Uh, this is supposed to be the last decent day we're going to have weather wise here in Richmond, Kentucky, and eastern Kentucky. Uh, today's supposed to get up to about like 55 degrees, and so there's Elvis right there on the, on the corner, on the, on the bottom roof right there, looking at me sideways. I see him just shook his head. And he, he shows himself off a lot prettier than that usually. He's just kind of hunched over right there on that bridge. Uh, I bring him on down. I just, I hope that you're able to see how nice these birds are. And how, what a tight family of pigeons they are. I keep stressing that. I don't mean to be repetitious, but I can't say it enough because there's nobody else that I know of in the United States that has a tight family of pigeons like this. And, and for sure not a tight family of Sions. So if you're wondering what's happened to the Sions, here they are. That bird there's uh, Kendall Lurch. That one has got a big one. He's a little bit, look, looks a little bit like Lurch. That's another bird that's out of 1606 and 155. There's Elvis now. That's Elvis's son I was showing you. That's Elvis right here. Elvis's son looks just like him almost. Elvis is a little more handsome. This is Elvis. Elvis's eyes are a little darker and he's a little bit smaller. A little bit what I call a little more refined in the face. That's Elvis right there. And that's Elvis's son I was showing you earlier than I said. Elvis. around here that means it doesn't always mean they're after a hawk yeah, I'd say 30% of the time one out of three times that they, they gang up and start calling around here uh, that's usually what they're after if you'll see how the lofts back up in here into the woods and I've got a creek that runs along them and we're still in the city limits of Richmond Kentucky so uh, and I've got about seven acres of land right here so it's kind of a uh, kind of a neat place to be in. I'm still in the country, but I'm also in the city. So 
it's a great place to have the pigeons, uh, but at the same time, it's a stopping off place for all all the hawks that are leaving out of the city or coming into the city. This is their first place that they get a little patch of woods, and they got the creek, and they got some. We get everything here. We get you know, I get minks, deer, coyotes, foxes, raccoons, skunks. You name it, mice, and every other thing that are that come down and that you you might expect or not expect. Uh, here, snakes. I get a lot of snakes here in the summertime, especially. Uh, sitting down on the creek, usually water snakes, black snakes. Anyways, I, I hope that I've been able to give you some idea at this point of at least uh, of, of the sea lions. Keep on going back. I'm coming into one of the nests. I'm, I'm allowing another pair to, to breed. Uh, this bird has, has raised some really fine racers in the past uh, couple of years. I've got him made to a beautiful blue hen. Just showing you he's still on the nest here in November. The eggs are, should be hatching about any day now. That's one of the birds. Which, where'd I hit the paws? Which one? This one? Here's another one of my breeders. That's sitting on a nest right now. Another bird that's out of 1606 and 155. And again, that blood it has consistently proven itself at all distances. Some of the birds uh, out in the Avery's that come out. Again, that, that really good looking blue cock, I know exactly who he's out of. That's Summertime's parents. That's 1606 and 155. And he's a full brother to a bird that flew, that led the United States several different times at uh, South Africa and was uh, sixth in the world at one point uh, on in, uh, in average speed in South Africa after about 20 races. And you can see they're not only uh, excellent racers, I mean, proven by the record, but also look how good looking he is. He's, a, he's wanting to come down out of Avery right now. Uh, he's very much a, a type of bird that I breed for. Uh, I'd like to have a 500 of them like that. Oh, that is. Okay, I'm just showing the loft we just uh, have been in. Just kind of giving you an idea of what it looks like. You can see the Avery. Dow work, not Dow work, but just a wood work to, to show you the roof, the ventilation. I'm gonna walk you through it kind of easy and then I'll leave this loft. I'm just trying to give you, you can see the birds are eating. Just give them some food. And as you come on out, You can see the, uh, another loft in there. I call it the barn loft. I'm walking toward it now. I'm up high. I'm about to, uh, right now, my head is probably 15 foot off the ground. And you see I've got a big pasture, cow pasture, that these birds back up to right here that they absolutely love. It, you know, it, it's remindful of, of, of the serenity that Charles Hotsman had in his loft. I'm headed back out. Again, I'm gonna separate these birds here in the next week. This is their last hoorah. And I'm not gonna breed for early hatches this year. But if you were going to breed for early hatches like I was started to talk about, I would put my birds together uh, right now, about a week before Thanksgiving. That gives them time to mate, uh, lay their eggs, and uh, you know, it takes 17, 18 days for the eggs to hatch. And it, you can get you can get bands on babies that are 12 days old and stuff, and the AU sends the bands out, you know, right around Christmas time. So with a little Vaseline and stuff, you can get bands on some of those December hatches. I do it all the time, and uh, and a lot of people like those December hatches to go into the big races, and 
Uh, I do too. I like the earlier the hatch, the better. I, I'm still, after all this year's experimentation, I still believe that the older pigeon has an advantage. That's about what a lot of people want to argue and say and try to rationalize. I, I still believe that the older pigeon is the bird to beat on a, on, a, on these one loft races. Are you ready? All right, we're in another loft. This is the barn loft. This is a big loft, big rooms. Uh, it was originally in a barn. <laughs> uh, another boy and I spent all day long, we just took the floor up in this loft, tore it out, we put the wood back down, and we're getting ready to put tin over that roof, over that wood. It's got a little bit dirty. The deer, uh, guy's getting ready to put the tin on, he's going deer hunting. But we won't be back for another couple of weeks, so it'll get done. It's just, it's a little bit slow in the process. In this particular loft, in this room right here, are nothing but my silver bar and uh, silver bar cocks uh, this year and now old birds. This is all the birds that I'm going to breed from. And every single silver cock here, I'll, every bird in this room will definitely be a breeder for me in, in 2022. These are all definite breeders for me, uh, every single bird. And I don't think I've got a single late hatch in here, a young bird that won't be old enough to mate when I put them together. No, they're all, these are all older birds. There's a, a several, a, a few of the, I only added two red to the team this year in reds, and one's up there. And a friend of mine named Jim Inflehart absolutely loves that pigeon. Jim likes the, the beauty of the fact that he's, for me, he said, Robbie, you, you need to, we really need to show that pigeon off to everybody because that, that's a fantastic pigeon. And I agree with Jim. Jim and I see birds a lot alike uh, in many ways. He loves the face on that bird. I know he does, but he also loves the fact that that bird's a, a red chick, classic Sion, has that powder head, and also has a lot of black flecking in its wings and tail, which a lot of people associate with the old Heisman birds. A lot of his birds did have that black yellow, and he does have it. He'll get it'll get stronger and stronger with him as he gets older. Each year as he gets older, he'll have more black in him. You know, he's about six, seven years old. He'll have a lot of black in him. You can see this silver cock over here. That's right underneath of him. You see the black in his tail and, up, and around where his, across his shoulders and stuff. You can see uh, that he's he'll have more and more black. And he's, I think, two years old, that particular pigeon. That silver up there, on the left, on that roost, that's your classic Sion type. That wedge face and so forth. There's a lot of people when they, they say, well, I know a Sion a mile off. I can spot a Sion 20 miles away. That's what they're talking about. They're talking about a bird like that. But like I've said so many times, that's that's a fallacy that not all Sions look like. These birds happen to be part of my family. You can see I cleaned all these nests out, but there's two or three nests that I left in there because I had some late hatches going on at that particular time. They're, those birds are gone now. Uh, I was telling you about Fatty, that silver hen with the double blue bands earlier. Uh, and there's her son that I told you she raised for me this year that's, that's really been a, a pigeon that I, I want, I bred for. That's a classic Charles Heisman sea lion. You can't get, you can't get more Charles Heisman than that, than that red check up there. That's a Heisman bird. If you walked into Heisman's loft back in the 1950s and 60s, that's what you would have seen. Half of his pigeons, half of them. Would have looked just like that, and uh, and probably 25% of them would have looked just exactly like that. So I'm not going anywhere in particular uh, molding the family anymore. But that, those those are just I call them throwbacks. Or, but I want to. He's what I want to breed from. He's going to, a, he's going to be a big breeder for me next year. I hope to raise about 12 babies out of him. He got a patty, another silver cock that's been 600 miles of a young bird. So, extremely well good. Here he comes out here. Shoot down a little bit. Yeah, I'll okay. Now, these birds went through a little bit later molt because this, this roof and this loft doesn't let light in it. This loft stays darker than the other lofts do. And this was almost proof positive that if a, lot, if a loft is dark on the inside, it'll affect the remote. And uh, it most definitely did. All my other birds and the other lofts, which had uh, light coming through the roof, they went through the remotes fairly, you know, in a good time. But these birds with this solid dark roof on them, a lot of them here it is late November, and you can see a few of them still haven't gone through the remotes. Uh, 
let me catch that bird that is so hard like I might name him is so hard. This bird is out of a blue cock and a red hen. I don't make too many blue cocks back on the red hens, but I did last year in one instance, and they raised this bird. There's the black in the wing, black flaking that I was talking about. That'll double up, triple up as he gets older. He'll get more and more black in him. And if a red check has black in its wings, it's always a male. Not gray, but black, if it, uh, or gray, dark gray. But if you see one's got a tan color in it, then that's female. Females have the tan color places in the and the male have that dark gray and black in him like he does. He's he's probably he's probably a most universal single classic Sion that I raised this past year. You know, I keep brick reds and he's not a brick red. He's just what I call a straight up red check. Brick reds are like those. They're red velvets almost. A very desirable color. And actually a lot of times you see pictures of the Heisman's iconic pigeon, old 51, 51, old 51, KY 51, old 51, born in 1951. He really wasn't a brick red, even though a lot of the pictures you see of him, he looks kind of like he's a brick red. He was somewhere between this red check and those brick reds. He was a dark red check is what he was. He, was a, he wasn't a brick red, he was a dark red check. This bird has got a fantastic body on him. It's like his daddy, super tight band. Keel, the whole nine yards. It's got a little length to him, which I, again, I like to have a bird. It's got a little bit of length of cock birds, what I'm going to do for breeders. silvers in here. Uh, one called Seagull. That's him right there. Sitting on the, where the nest is at. I named him Seagull. Jeremy's still here. I'm going to get him all to fly out in Avery. I named him that because he's built like a seagull and that's what I wanted to try to build for a long distance. And he's a line bred to hardcore. And he raised a son that I call Ghost. I call him that because his son had it. It's much like him had a little lot of color eye, almost ghostly looking. Again, this is these are birds that are as fine a Sion as you could ever dream to have. And these are classic Sions. The silvers and the reds, are, that color is often associated with the uh, Sions. And here they are, you know, as good as, as, good as you can want. I'm trying to, trying to show you these breeders. I'm gonna work them out here to go out to Avery. I don't know how Again, these birds are all very tame when I'm in here by myself. A little bit nervous with Jeremy in here and the hawks being out here today. Come on. You'll see that I use, come on, big dog. That's that lady, that's that young bird. No, that's not. Uh, there's a classic I see on right there. Jeremy, if you'll walk over on that side. Yeah. We can, we can try to keep here. Don't move your hands much, just keep them up. I've got my van parked down here today. Uh, because I brought in 12 bags of feed and I didn't have to carry them down over the hill. But again, I'm trying to show you just the quality of these Sions. Talk here with the ice here. He was out of a blue hen that I made it back to hardcore. That blue hen I called number one. This cock right here. She flew 500 miles for me five times. And he's a fantastic pigeon. I've had a lot of people that love that bird. And you can see these reds are nice. Go back around again. I'm just trying to, again, I'm trying to give a, a, an overview of some of the breeders that I'll be working with this year. 
And I wanted you all to see the quality of the pigeons of these sea hundred. You're not gonna find this anywhere else. This video may run a little bit long, but I'm hoping that you'll enjoy it. If you're a Sion person, uh, I know I would. I would love to have seen a video shot like this in Paul Sion's loft. And uh, I wish I could have shot a video like this in Charles Heisman's loft. Uh, you know, I, I lived up there a part of my life and I took thousands of pictures of, of his pigeons for him, but I never shot any videos. And sure wished I did have a, a you know, a two or three hour video of all of his loft and all of his birds. I mean, how wonderful that would be if somebody had that. But at least I can go to my grave knowing that, hey, there's been several videos shot of me, you know, in my 70s uh, of, of my family of Sions, which I hope will live beyond me after I'm gone. That's about all a person can do with his pigeons. Uh, I don't have any uh, super light colored powder silvers, but at the same time, I do have some lighter colored silvers. Uh, this one old cock over here, this double blue banded, again, he's a full brother to Fatty. And he's, a, here in the last year, has gotten a, some kind of, there's nothing wrong with him, it's just as he's gotten older, his throat's gotten up, he's got a little, it's filled out funny up underneath his throat. See that? It's a feathering. Uh, I don't like it. But at the same time, he's, he's as nice a pigeon as you're going. He's the father of a, one of the birds that flew back from 700 miles. So what more can you want with a pigeon that's a cock, you know, bred a 700 mile young bird? Again, a young bird. So I highly value him as a breeder. He's a medium small bird. And uh, a lot of my silvers in this loft will go back onto him. Now that cock that just flew down here on the right, uh, that's a... Uh, Ghost, and he's also line bred back to uh, Hardcore, which was a fantastic flyer uh, that flew 600 miles as a young bird. It was my first bird back from 600 miles. Came back early on the second day with the temperatures being 90 degrees and was the first bird back out of about 150 birds that I let loose down in Florida at that time. And uh, he's, a lot of that blood has held up very consistently to fly well at long distances. That seagull there is on the show. That seagull is the daddy of ghosts. Showing you all some of these pictures, I could talk. I could keep on talking. I don't know what to talk about. But uh, you know, when people are showing pigeons, they uh, they call, they call these some of the silver bars. I've seen them called red bars in shows, and uh, I call them silver bars. But you know, when you're just generally in a general slang term, I just call them silvers. You know, red bar is a silver bar, and I just call them silvers. So if you hear me say the word silver, I'm talking about a silver bar or a red bar. And the silvers can have you know, little places on their wings, little coloration, and you can, that'll be, you know, what they call a mealy. Like I said, I've only got one mealy right now out of all the pigeons I've got, and that's, I call her Queen Strawberry. She's a strawberry mealy. Usually when that mealy color is sort of blurred a little bit, uh, I, they call that a, more of a strawberry, sort of a pinkish color more to it, and, and, and the, the uh, mealiness of it is, is kind of, I want to say slurred or spread out a little differently. So I call that, uh, we call that a strawberry, strawberry mealy. And again, that was a color that Heisman had. Big birds are extremely healthy. Again, the uh, big, big room with a tin floor that stays dry. That's a key in this room. These aren't show birds, these are all racers, they're long distance birds. But they happen to be fairly beautiful too, I believe. You know, I'll walk them back out in Avery one more time. And then we'll... Here you go. I'll walk them out. Usually when I 
come to the wall. I whistle Dixie. Name the birds. The birds know when I'm at the top of the hill. When they hear that word, when they hear me saying Dixie. When they hear me saying Dixie, they know I'm up there. We're running. Uh, Dixie is better to keep your birds open running. And it's overfeeding. It's about that. It's, it's that way with the lot of situations. When you're fooling with racing pigeons, it's good to have them a little bit on the edge all the time. Um, I see a lot of pet dogs. People have got them way too fat when they're walking and stuff. And I'm wanting to say, hey, you need it. There's a beautiful bird right there. That's, you know, that looks gold. The silver cock right here. And he's down out of the, the bird that I'm telling you right now. I have a place on this road. The w you know, he's got four, six hundred miles in his pedigree. So what more do you want? You know, and a bird's beautiful too. So that's pretty it's pretty fantastic to have that going on. Same thing with these reds, here's my Leroy reds. There's a gorgeous one. Once you get these brick red, that really rich dark brick red with a black or dark eye. That's this year's. He's, I always get two red chicks this year. And I showed you the one, the, the red chick cut. There's the other one. And you can see why I kept it. And in the hand, he is a dynamite. He's a dark brick red, handles fantastic, medium-sized bird, dark eyes, uh, down out of 600 miles. Classic, classic Robins, no sweat, see them. And uh, many people love those brick reds. Uh, I don't see a lot of them in other lofts and stuff. Not, not that kind of brick red, especially when you do see a, a brick red. You'll notice that my birds all have closed backs. And when I say closed backs, I'm talking about the wings come back over the back, you know, close it up. And they have tight vents and, uh, and and good balance, you know. Sometimes I'll see people that are, say, they're advertising, you know, see on, but let's look at the birds. They're pitiful looking. They're, you know, their backs are open. They're big old birds. You know they couldn't fly. So um, that's, that's a huge difference. They're pets. These are not pets. These are working birds. So, this is classic bird. Look at the balance and the size on you. can see in your mind without that bird even flying that you know that this bird could fly 500 miles. It doesn't. You know, you can see it's, it's a very distinct possibility. Let's cut off just for a second. Well, this is no sweat again. We're still shooting this same video. I just caught one of my silver cocks. We're still in the loft with the silver and red cocks. Uh, this is one of my favorite birds that I raised this year. Uh, the light silver cock, not a powder silver, I would call it, but a, 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 a more of a light silver. And he's out of fatty and the uh, and silver cock that's five and six hundred miles. And uh, he will change in looks at particular bird. You right now, you see there's a little with a head rounded like that and comes down, does a, an indentation, sort of sort of snappy looking, what they call uh, more of a common. But on this particular Sion, I, I know how his mom and his daddy and his grandparents all do. But he'll fill out a lot more. He's a late hatch. He's a wonderful pigeon and everyone. What you really need to do, what's fantastic about this bird, is his, is his bloodlines. I mean, he's got solid 600 mile bloodlines in him on both sides of his, you know. On, I think if I went back to the third generation, he would find three generations of all 600 miles in that. And, uh, and he's a big, strong bird. Uh, really kind of bird I like to breathe. Really tight banded and just everything. He's a little round headed. A lot of the older silvers, you know, old, old, that Heisman imported from Paul Sion, uh, a lot of them were round headed, very much like this. This looks like the old type of Paul Sion bird. Go straight up. Come on, straight up. There you go. If you want to see a Sion and look like an import, there you go. That looked like a, that's a Paul Sion import. He's really thrown back. And I'm real proud of that pigeon. Just be, he's carrying on the Sion tradition. And he's, uh, you know, in three generations of, of 600 miles all back on him. And what more do you want? I'm, I'm keeping him as a permanent breeder. Why, why wouldn't I? I mean, he's going to get better looking. And I know he's going to raise great pigeons. And I can mate him to any number of hens. I'll probably put him back onto a silver hen. Next year, I might put him back onto a brick red, but probably silver. I'm going to have a few more brick red hens than I do silver. Here, I got a, another 2022 breeder. Wouldn't let me catch him while I go, putting on a big show. 
I guess I'm getting old. You know, I used to have one friend that did a lot of drinking, like drinking whiskey. And he said, you know, my pigeons, they know every time I'm drinking. He said, because when I go out in the loft, they won't let me catch them. And I thought, it might be because you're drunk, the reason you can't catch them. Not because your pigeons know you was drinking, but of course I never did. Being the gentleman, I didn't contradict him in any way whatsoever. Here you go with another beautiful classic Sion. He's got a little bit of brown in his head, which you don't see a lot of times in the silvers. But this is what I call that Robert Sion type that I talked about earlier with some of those blue bars. That wedge face. And this is kind of what I think Robert, you know, when the people started bringing birds in uh, into the United States from Robert Sion after Paul died, uh, they were getting Sion's more this type as opposed to that glass very pigeon that I showed you with the round head, a little bit bigger. That was more the old Paul Sion type. And here you got the Robert Sion type. I've still got, you know, I'm trying to bring the family into being one one type, but, but I'm still getting, since I'm fooling with this family the way I do, I, I still get, you know, a little bit of both. It's, it's, it's a good thing, not a bad thing here. But I love this bird. I that mink last year. And he looked just like his daddy. And he's one of those birds that's got that this where this red check cock is again uh, you might want to come over close to me Jeremy. This is a classic Heisman Sion. You know a lot of most of Heisman Sions weren't really super beautiful. They were this kind of pigeon. Which I don't think is what you call super beautiful. Beautiful nice pigeon. But not, you know, super showy in the face and great you know, all that stuff. Didn't have the dark out. This is a classic Heisman Sion. And and another thing about it, not only this color, that's the Heisman's color, that, that average red check I call it, sometimes a little darker red. But they had this little frill marks this, this, where the, the feather folds a little bit on the wing. Heisman was big on that and I always said, Robbie, that's what you want in your breeders. You know, that he said he said that it meant that they had, you know supple feather, you know, a lot more feathering and they could pass that on in generations. But this is a classic, again, Heisman Sion that I bred. Uh, straighten up there. He's not showing himself. He's a nice pigeon. See that? He's gone. <laughs> but that, that's a, he's another one. Uh, just get some plots. We'll count me in another room and the barn off for keeping up with the whites. And uh, a lot of these birds we train out to fly. We, we kept a lot of them up this year. Had a raccoon got in this side of the log twice in the past year and killed about 15 birds each time. Uh, and we got them out this summer and the hawk decimated them. So we're down to about 20 birds all over again. So I'm going to leave these birds up that we use a lot of times. Uh, John loves them more than anything, and he likes to watch the fox fly. Right now with the Cooper Hawk population, the wife don't get to fly up very long. But they're Sions. We've crossed, we've crossed birds into some other whites over a 20-year period, and these birds have a lot of Sion blood in them, and these whites will fly back from a couple of hundred miles. Uh, I actually had uh, two whites that flew back from a thousand miles. And we've had some whites that's flown back from uh, 300 miles and stuff several times. So they're a way of not better than most whites. And we just cut it off. Well, we're getting ready to shut it down here. Showing you one pair of birds here that uh, I'm putting together, wanting to get mated together. Not really wanting to raise babies out of them. I just want to get them established early as I can. A real nice stencil cock that. I've been complimented on a lot of times. I and a beautiful light blue check in. Uh, go back up into the loft one last little time just to show you the as I'm leaving back into the barn loft. This is my home away from home. This is where Charles Heisman still remains alive every day. Be nice if he could come back and, and see see the birds what I've done to him.
Can I show you some of this room here? That's it, y'all come out so I can get a picture of you. That's it. Hold back down there. Hold back down there. I use every kind of water in there is. I appreciate people uh, looking at my videos and appreciate the nice comments that people make about them. Uh, you know, I've devoted a big part of my life uh, to my pigeons. And when they go to my grave, that might be the one thing that I'm known for in my pigeons. Uh, but I've been into a lot of other things in my life. And you can see as we come down, we have to step down, coming down out of this barn. Well, I step down four steps. And then from here, I uh, have got, you know, a feed room and a lot of cages and stuff. There's some crates of Charles Hyphens right there. And come on down. I've got twice as many crates uh, at the house and room that I've got there. Uh, some, of the, some of the feed bins that I keep. And another pair of birds that I'm mating together over here. Just getting them used to each other. Traps, some old old sweatshirt, um, and some leftover materials from when we were building the floor. Uh, I hear the crows again. Jeremy, if you want to shoot me up here, I'll show them, show them the creek. This is where I get this is where I get water for my birds in the winter time. Starting about. Actually started about December, and it lasts through December, January, February, March. I go at least four months getting water from right here out of this creek. Right here. And you can see what it looks like up through here. Right now, I've got this dam built here, and uh, that's the no sweat dam as opposed to the Hoover Dam. And uh, I, I can get my water. I bust the ice and get water there and get. Birds do okay. Sometimes the water's blue or green or purple. Might have a beer can or a whiskey bottle floating down it or something like that. Or waste, toxic waste from someplace upstream. But, hey, the birds, the birds seem to build a nice immunity to it. And it's probably no worse than the stuff we drink ourselves. We found out the truth about it. Uh, I thought you might want to see, you know, that. I think that probably ends our great expose uh, about the 2022 breeders at the No Sweat Loss, the Sion, not Sion, breeders uh, that I'll have, and keep keeping the tradition strong, and uh, we'll see what all happens in 2022. Appreciate you looking.